So this fuel tank is a giant pain in the ass. For some reason, when we pump, it keeps clicking. Um, whether the vent is wrong or what, I don't understand what's going on. But um, it does give us time to con contemplate for a bit. Um, I think I'm getting roughly 11 and a half miles to the gallon. And that's probably because we don't have overdrive. Um, stupid thing just keeps clicking. The, uh, um, I think the Ford, the F-350, we got about nine and a half miles to the gallon. Keeps clicking. But uh, I think once we get a 6R80 in here with Coyote, we're gonna do much, much better with fuel. I gotta figure out what's going on here. There it goes. I can't be. Montana, beautiful, beautiful Montana. The truck is actually running really good, except this weird noise every time you kind of take off and then slow down. You hear it? Kind of worried about that until I realized it was the ice in the cooler. <laughs> Got a nice cold one here. There's one issue I think the camber is out quite a bit on my driver's side, and that might be part of it because I think we have it in the wrong hole. It's kind of a kind of a teeter-totter so if we lower it the camber will come in um, and we're gonna stop by a viewer's shop just to get that done quick and we're stuck in traffic which doesn't help at all <laughs> yeah so idling nicely it's 200 stuck in traffic it doesn't get hot it's um, just when we're climbing the mountains and oh, it's understandable we put it in third gear and hide behind some of the truckers and kind of bow our heads a little bit until we get the coyote in there and just say yeah you know no rush no rush but at uh, 80 miles an hour, it does pretty good. Okay, so, took our exit to cruise off the highway there, and then she stalled on me, which is, like, I was pretty good at feathering the throttle, it just got too hot, because you're cruising along, going nice and fast, and then uh, the temperature spiked, and then she quit. So, hopefully she didn't seize. We got our coolant reservoir nice and full and overflowing, so we'll let it sit for a little bit, and then uh, see if she turns over again. Maybe just a couple on the intake here. <laughs> it's running really good, like really, really good. Other than that horrible exhaust leak, you can't have a Ford without an exhaust fumes coming into the cab, so. That's not bad, we got like a thousand miles or so under the belt. Coming down, it's just making its way. No offense, but six Canadians would have stopped already. So, you all right? You need a tow, you need a phone? <laughs> Not one person yet has stopped. So. Well, the plywood in the back window screams, help me. It's not as rock hard as it was. Yeah. Thought she was gonna turn around to see us. No, she was just like... Under 230 again. Nice. And there we go. 
Now we'll know that if we have an exit, we have to slow down like a good mile and a half yeah. <laughs> and do our cool down lap, cool down lap. <laughs> on the highway. <laughs> stop right here, right? All right, we're off the highway. We met Josh, hey Josh. Hi. who offered his shop to us. Um, if, if you notice, the camber is way too uh, positive. I think what's happening is we should have stuck it in the lower hole. The pivot is right on the spring, and then the hole too high tilts the axle up and tilts the uh, tire out. We're gonna we're gonna chew this tire on the outside. We don't want to do that. So we're gonna take the weight off, pull this pin out, and put it in the lower hole, and then we're off on the highway again. Twenty-one wrench. Oh. Or seven eighths wrench. Okay. I'll just yeah, say, yeah. We, were, we were just putting away tools today and we couldn't find the twenty-one. Oh, yeah. Alright. And that looks much better. It's not perfect, but it's much, much better. There we go. <laughs> so, yeah. so the exhaust manifold's leaking bad, and because we can't roll the window up, the, oh, the yeah, exhaust yeah. was dumping out the back, and then it was curling right back in through the window, yep. and it was just killing us. So if we leave the windows up, it's not bad, yeah. but then we're dying of heat. <laughs> so like, at least let us dump it up the side, and we're, we're, we called every parts store to see if we can get an exhaust manifold for it, but uh, nobody's got any. I might have one if it's the same as the car ones. So the passenger side kind of shoots straight back and then goes down at a 45. I'm thinking it's pretty close. I think that's it. Yeah, you can have it if you want. <laughs> <laughs> we called all over I every part. Yeah. While I'm driving, he's calling over. No, you don't have it. No, don't have it. Yeah, right on. That's it. How long have you been doing YouTube? I think about two years. Nice. Yeah, I think that's it, man. Yeah, you got the steps, the right angle, everything. You're a lifesaver. We're not gonna throw it in now because we're ready to hit the road again, but thank you very, very much, man. Yeah, no very problem. Very much appreciated. CPR Garage, YouTube? Yep. Yeah? Yep. Instagram? Instagram, yep. Facebook. Nice, right yep. yeah. All right, I'll tell your family, thank you very much for watching. I'm just gonna goof off here for a bit. We're gonna keep going. All right, <laughs> good luck. There you go. Facebook Marketplace, and <laughs> we found a parts Bronco with a super clean fender and door. It was brown, but we didn't realize that the brown was inverted from ours, a little bit off. Somebody hit a door really hard here. Three three marks here, I don't know what that is. Oh, suction cup to try and pull it out already. And then this fender's beat up really good, and front corner's all caved in, and this is all caved in. So we thought, you know what, let's just take some more rust-free parts home, and uh, we're just gonna throw these on uh, it'll be the colors won't match which is unfortunate but we'll have to paint it then i think the hood is just a slightly different color than this and then i think this side has been painted which is why this this is darker than here and that's why this clear coat is coming off and that isn't uh we might find some bondo down below but i don't care it still won't be rusty so we're gonna take that front fender, that door, pop them on ours. I'm gonna give him those, and then we're gonna take the, some of the interior pieces are much nicer than ours, and a new dash uh, or a window um, cover lining. I'm tired, so I don't have to cut myself anymore. And these have power windows, so no power locks. <laughs>
tighter because the seals are a lot tighter. So it won't leak as much. Ooh. Opens. All right, that's that. Oh, I bet you that's it. Nice. That was in here. I bet you that door got switched Ooh. or something, and that is the lock to match that key that's supposed to go in this door. So we're all good. Hey, right, Dennis. Thank you very much for some proper Montana hospitality. You're welcome. You got a pile of other cars here too. Oh uh, yeah, too many. I got relatives' cars and it, relatives' exes' cars. And... You, you're too nice. Too nice. A nice parking lot, but Dennis is even it offered. This is off a neighbor down here because he's a bit of a snob. <laughs> <laughs> Dennis even offered to, to store cars for us if we want to buy more. But thanks again, Dennis. You're welcome. We're gonna keep traveling. Really appreciate it. Have and, a good trip. Uh, yeah. Off we go. driving pretty much non-stop haven't really had time to work on the truck which is great because it's been doing really good got a couple major issues though that need to be taken care of that exhaust manifold just we got too many fumes coming into the cab and it's running pretty rich but we don't have any jets or anything to re-jet it i don't have vacuum gauges or anything to, to, to test it this guy on the internet keeps offering his shop to us though and we weren't gonna stop but he entices us with some cold snacks so we're gonna stop in i don't know exactly who it is but he's kind of relentless and saying, come to my shop, come to my shop. So he's a little bit out of the way. Well, uh, he's a lot out of the way. Here we go. Honestly, who takes an old piece of crap Cadillac and takes it on the highway? SD33T Nissan Turbo. Oh. What is that, a three point something? I don't know the leaders stuff. <laughs> it's got six cylinders in it. <laughs> it smells like every Nazi I've ever fired up. Yeah. Oh, check out what we just bought. Oh, no way. <laughs> we want to trade for something? No, absolutely not. I kind of want to drive that home from Canada. Is your, is your passport good? Yeah? Yeah? Yeah. Because that uh, you should uh, come over and go for a little rip. Absolutely. What power is it? Decent uh, something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So what's the plan? I think exhaust manifold on the side, the worst ones will be the two bolts from, you know, we get those from underneath. I see you ran it hard on the way here, get them nice and hot. Yeah, that's the trick, eh? 
Oh, so you burned and scalded yourself and then you got memories for years. <laughs> Best way to test a friendship is snap their manifold bolts off. <laughs> I like your spacers on your charging wheel. Oh yeah, it's um... Custom fab? Yep, it's a GM one wire. He said we don't deal with Ford stuff. Yeah, we want it to work, <laughs> so. Right. Cool. But yeah, it's been actually really good and I didn't really want to mess with the carb too much because it fires, it starts every single time. If I shut it off hot, you gotta pop the hood and wait a couple minutes, but other than that, she's been pretty good. But yeah, she's running rich. Maybe just take the hood off then. <laughs> then it <laughs> always starts. <laughs> <laughs> we like we like that hood. Did you see the back window? But, uh, oh, I thought you guys did. No, that. no, no. It's been like that for years. So it actually goes up and down. Yeah, it's the craftsmanship is it is unreal. Wow. Here, let me let me see if it still works. <laughs> Just ignore that crunching. <laughs> it's just <laughs> clearancing. <laughs> oh, I approve. That's that's excellent. It's uh, it's getting better. It's it's like a number two tent. It's really hard to see through. But as we're driving, we're starting to get a little bit more. What's the <laughs> tint rearview <laughs> mirror? The tint is coming. Tint is out. Yeah. It even matches colors. Actually, yeah. kind of. She's got good bones. She got good bones, and that, that's all. We can. Come out. Okay, back down. It's gonna be a good day. Look at that. Like I said, never gonna buy an Ontario vehicle ever again. You just spin it out by hand. I barely, you're barely tight. I don't know how that's happening. I would have broke six of eight by now. <laughs> I also just go straight to the impact, so. <laughs> You have more patience than me. <laughs> a little left, a little right, a little more left, a little more right. It dumps it nicely into the, every time it gets hot, it puts it nicely into the overflow and then it doesn't suck it back in again. Ford design. Yeah. Who would have thought? So if we got to empty that and then top up the rat again, it'll be golden. <laughs> Blockage fixed. Uh, good man. 49 bucks. I'm not used to seeing these with like, body mounts that aren't missing. A rad support that's yeah. connected all the way Usually around. This crunches, <laughs> you know, kind of neat. What's west of Montana? Idaho. Idaho. Yeah. Lots of old iron sitting there. But Montana's just starting to get into the rust, like the the square body stuff. Yeah. But uh, as soon as you come here, nothing. It's like, pretty well picked out up here. Yeah. And, it's, and anything that's left is so, well, I buy it. It's junk, basically. Yeah. Like yeah. this up here is already a gold mine. You don't have to no. touch it. And you can tell more people are looking at it as you're driving down the highway. Oh, yeah. Um, the guy at the hotels, they're walking around it. Oh, wow. You even got the dang old plug wrench. Yeah. The back is missing on this one, but it's uh, on the other fender. So. Oh, yeah. <laughs> nice. Still a bit toasty. Wow, that's too easy. What was he talking about? You just need a donut gasket. Yeah. Oh well, whatever. Throw the other one on anyway. Cause I I thought I saw something welded. Exactly. Oh, you're gonna lose 7.3 horsepower. Yeah. And that's like 90% of your horsepower. Burn, 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 burn. Oh, they flow the same. Just. An inch of carbon in there? Or? See, reporting these is what we're doing. I don't know. I don't think it matters. Hey, where's just the donut? I just throw a new gasket on it, and these are all loose, and then it's obviously leaking in here. If anything, that the studs are in better shape. But... Nothing we can do here. I'm 
I'm not much of a carb guy. I didn't have any tools with me, but I know it's running rich. I can just smell it. My eyes are watering a little bit. I'm starting to get bright ideas. Like, I love this track. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have any smaller jets? Do you have a jet kit for the Holly? You know, I, I don't for a Holly. I have some Metal Brock stuff. But we could go EFI. I do have a sniper. <laughs> I'm coming to Price Group Garage where we're putting a sniper on it. Well, I mean, you guys wire it. I'll just, you know, support you in that. But yeah, we got, I got a sniper kit we could just throw on this. I mean, make sure we got a fuel pump. and I'm up for it. All right. We got a manifold with no O2 sensor in it, so I'll take care of the O2 sensor. All right. That's a big deal. Um, yeah, you I'll start carrying it this, I guess. <laughs> Sounds good. Do I get to keep the carb? You can keep the carb. I will trade you the EFI for the carb. Deal. <laughs> Deal. O2. Touch screen. I think all you need is pump. That would be it. Pump. Stickers. Stickers. That's, that's where the horsepower comes from. <laughs> if you don't want black, I got shiny. If you don't want shiny, I got gold. Maybe slightly overfueled. <laughs> yeah. But that would be a good fit. Yeah, let's do it. People are gonna be so confused. You guys show up with a carbureted truck and you leave with EFI. They're gonna be concerned what happened to Derek. The old two bung will still be there. <laughs> I can't get my socket on there with the whole uh, with the whole O2 sensor on there, but there we go. If you ever wondered what the inside of an O2 sensor looks like, that's it. Now I can get my socket on there. Now I can pull it out. So even though the manifolds are exactly the same and that one's not broken, this one's got the O2 sensor for the sniper. So we'll throw that on. Some up. idiot lifted this thing. <laughs> <laughs> now we need step ladders to work on. Oh, this is a, uh... you ever oh. seen this? Yeah. You know what, I'm not even gonna charge you extra. Old school drag racing off-road stuff. So when the front bowl fills, it just transfers to the rear instead of dumping right in. Oh, okay. Uh, some people use rubber, but that's custom made. Right on. That's worth another 50 cents, maybe. This is much easier than trying to put the bung in there. I know. And it's tight. Saving, saving weight. I can't actually want the front end to be a little heavier because I think it's up a bit higher. What was the front vacuum? Oh, I unhooked something. Yeah. We'll just forget about that. So, need a ball thingy up here. And don't have a kick down because it's a manual. So I think we're good. I can just borrow that and be all set. I ended up putting like 948 million fittings in that Chevelle. So I found out vice grips actually does not work on these <laughs> aluminium fittings. Get out of here. I know, right? Oh, we need studs. Ah, we'll run bolts through that. Huh? <laughs> Don't tell Rich something broke down there. We're putting a holly on a needle brock intake, huh? All right. Sure. I'm gonna drop my bolt. More wires in here. Now I really dropped it. Three ought to hold this on. Four kind of seems overkill. That coil's gonna have to be moved. Yeah, that was PCV. Can we just eliminate that? Yep. Oop. Can I bend your throttle bracket? Yep. I like working with him. He's we're on the same wavelengths. Yeah, if you happen to find a gold bolt down there, don't be shy to pick it up. There, install done. <laughs> nope, not even close. Maybe with the EFI on here and maybe a 
little bit less of an exhaust leak. We'll just leave everything alone and drive it as it is. Homemade exhaust, so I don't think it's 100% lined up. So I thought, well, if I can get the flange to tight first and figure out where it's happy and then draw the manifold in afterwards, but uh, that's a no go. So I think, uh, ooh, is it big hammer time? <laughs> it's almost big hammer time. That, or if we just get it to where it's red liquid, it'll bend anywhere. You set it at like. 18 from the preferred AFR. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just sips on the field. <laughs> I'm getting 48 miles a gallon of my Bronco. What are you guys doing? <laughs> Let's see. What side are we running the fuel on? Let's see if we can plan the lines here. There's like 48 foot gap here. We just take the return right down the back, maybe? Yeah, absolutely. What side's your fuel lines on this side? I'm taking it. Um, Ish. Could be. Looks there's something. There's a pipe. Yeah. I look at something. Ah! That Milwaukee car has wheels. <laughs> so is this cooler? <laughs> Milwaukee put brakes on your wheels. <laughs> Safety first. <laughs> you know when they were developing this, so like some idiot a... <laughs> is gonna stand on this. You realize that. And, and you can make it as high as you want, literally. Yeah. Gettle found it. Yeah. Well, yeah. I know a guy that's pretty good at keep, that. Keep, keep in mind, I think we'll probably put another 3,000 miles on it. Where are we at? We just changed the oil. Yeah? Good stuff. Oh, yeah. This is going to look all fast and furious. So, hope you're okay with it, but I'm going to use some snowmobile fuel line for your back in advance here. I wouldn't expect anything like <laughs> I would also accept lawnmower fuel line. Garden hose, a little too big. But... Is that an air check line? This here? That's actual. All the bits? Braided. <laughs> I saw the tape and it looked like the clip on check. Oh. <laughs> Which is like, all right, this is getting the little. I don't want to have. Of course, I got. Fuel line, give me some side cutters. I think this is gonna be like a four or five t-shirt day. Well, I'll be surprised if that fixes any leak, but at least I got the O2 sensor in there. Yeah. <laughs> we'll, see. Yeah. we'll see what happens. Here. Twisty, twisty, slidey. Fire up the Milwaukee. You know, this gets really hot on your fingers, it turns out. Here we go, some sort of science or wizardry, whatever. That's done. Any sparks or fire yet? Nothing? Nothing. Good, good. Nice. 13.3. Sure. I think that was 11 points. <laughs> I think 10, 5 is the magic number. So. We're just running the return fuel back to the tank, get them out the pump. Derek thinks he's got to find an extra filter. Although, haven't had any issues with fuel starvation yet. If we had a clogged filter, maybe it wouldn't run so rich. So, that goes into there. Take these really expensive oil fittings and then hose clamp it. <laughs> yep. And then you just jam it on and run a 22 cent hose clamp over that. <laughs> and that should work. Nice. You want to poke a hole into the feller neck and just throw it in through there? 
So there's two clamps for the pump, no clamps for the filter. Now we have one clamp for each, and that'll get us one. Safety squints. Yep. Got some hose clamps. So this is kind of concerning reading this. And it says don't do any of that. <laughs> and I've successfully completed seven of these. <laughs> we'll just leave it and see what happens. It says uh, engine requirements. Engine horsepower is between 200 and 650. Whoa, whoa. Uh oh. <laughs> Uh -oh. Felt like 160 in the seat to me. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's like 200 crank downhill with a wind. <laughs> Let's go with that. That doesn't specify crank or wind. Yep. Check. <laughs> got that. I mean, all these other ones are good. Unleaded fuel. Yeah. Got that. We got eight cylinders. <laughs> Should be fine. I have probably seven. Oh, that's right. <laughs> You're running seven and a quarter. Well, we'll just set it up as a six cylinder. Maybe she'll really rip then. <laughs> So just to get us home and it's quicker, we don't want to risk dropping the tank and the tank is full and we're just going to put the return line into the steel um, filler neck and then point it down. This is more of a, this is what we did, don't do it, than it is anything else, but that's so nice. Every bolt just comes out and spin up my hand. It's still a 5.5 millimeter, 40 <laughs> years later. Oh, there's the issue. Oh. Yeah, that'll do it. <laughs> so when he stuck it in, <laughs> it must have been folded right over. Fixed it. Huh. <laughs> so that's why we can't fill it fast enough, but now we can. Basically a Tesla for how long? <laughs> Basically it's a Tesla. You gotta stay in here for 20 minutes. That's it, all fixed. Drill it. So, oh, maybe this one is, that, that's 716s. Which one's pipe? So use that one, and then <laughs> cross thread this it. Pipe? I mean, pipe thread gets bigger as you go, so you really just need to start the bottom. There we go. Oh, that's beautiful. See, we got Teflon. I know. <laughs> Get some stylings out of there. Yeah, you can, you can go ahead. Oh, the horn doesn't work. I like how there's three quarters of turn of the wheel and nothing happens. <laughs> we gotta connect this to that. I skipped a step. Right, that goes in the mechanical. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we just need to take that off there. Yeah. Three feet of hose? Yeah, okay. Yep. I'm gonna warm up fuel line with a torch. You gotta do it before you put it full of fuel. There we go. Good to go? Yeah, we're good to go. Nice. I'm just get a hose clamp on that. Another 15 horsepower right there. Nice. This filter got us heated, and that filter should get us home. Nothing's leaking. Anything out the back? I think we're good. Nice. All right, so I'll go through the wizard here. I'm just gonna select 
four injector, eight cylinder, a mass of 302 cubic inches, which is like 519 waffles Canadian. Next, we'll go, let's go 750 target idle. Got stock mild. No, nope. yeah, this isn't a race engine, right? No power adder. We're running a coil. It'll create a file for us here. Okay, now we just cycle the ignition. And that tune will be in there. Ready? Yeah. Son of a bitch. The line that I squeezed on is just leaking a little bit. But the will start. Yeah, fire. So that quick or filter swap. <laughs> yeah, I guess I don't really have to. Yeah. Every time it turns over, fire shoots out. I don't understand. <laughs> Holly, what, what are you doing? <laughs> Third gear puts the hazards on and catches the fire every time I trip the key. I can't see what's going on, but I'm hearing a lot of stuff breaking and bending from down here. You got an extra clamp right here. Okay. That thing's sharp, huh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> these are awesome. Where'd you get these so I can buy a pair? <laughs> you know, hobo freight. <laughs> it's on. It's Better on. than before. Better than before. The WD-40 did it. Oh, yes. <laughs> these cause more fires than ex-wives, but I'll use it. Okay, try again. What do you got in here? Good? Yeah. <laughs> I broke it earlier and told Aaron not to tell you. Yeah, there it is. Here I go up. <laughs> oh, see, I was fine. It would have self clearance. <laughs> What's that horrible, horrible noise? I'm like, it that sounds way better. Horrible. That went way too smooth. It didn't catch fire. No, it actually started really easy. Really easy. <laughs> <laughs> Are you sure we did everything right? I don't know. It's not leaking on a fire. There's no knocking. This is weird. Oh. Your leak? Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna go get a drink. <laughs> is it coming up? Yeah. Oh. It's exactly the same. It even bolts right up. I kind of want to hear it run again before we pull it apart because that sounded freaking sweet. So what it needs to do is go on an angle and go in like that. What if we did both? Do you think we could jam a 90 in that fitting? It's just that this is hitting straight into, there's a pipe that goes right here. It's basically back. dead in and then going out. So. I think if you, if you curled it around and shoved the line in so that it's up to here, it wouldn't leak. 
I would just dump it right back in the tank, right? Agreed. Well, that just in like that until the fitting sticks out and I can put my hose on that with the hose clamp and then it won't cut itself. Yeah, a nice little welder. Clean this up, tick this off, cut that end off. And then they're good. You got crazy around this torch? Yeah, I just need to angle it a touch more. It was in like this, it's pointing kind of down. We can do it that way. Actually, let's, let's do that. Let's, let's put a little curl in it. Nice. Yeah, let's try it. Custom. I think that'll work just fine. It's probably going to catch fire right away because it's full of gas fumes. This is the welding area. Right <laughs> <on> the <field>. <laughs> <laughs> No Vince well, but it'll work. That's still hot, but that likes to go into an odd shape. So now we're making a, a shaper raider. Hello. Maybe just cut that and leave it on. <laughs> that's, a, that's the point. It's oh, like okay. it's all oblong, but now it's kind of kind of pulling a push on it. It's fixed. It's nice. Super C. Yeah. And he's like, yeah, it's low on power. I'm like, okay. So I get over there. I'm just an apprentice. The guy's uh, tractor's going pa 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 pa. I'm like, I don't know. Is that what an old Super C is supposed to sound like? It's like the one where the seat's way off to the side. It's got a single wheel at the front. <laughs> I pull one spark plug. Pa 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 pa. Two spark plugs. Pa 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 pa. Three spark plugs. Pa pa pa. It's only running on one cylinder. <laughs> I tuned it up. He's like, man, I never heard it sound like that before. That's amazing. He's like, so much power. I'm like, when was the last time you did points and condenser? What are those? <laughs> That's the same with this, right? You pull into a parking lot, you're like, it kind of sounds like shit, but maybe it's supposed to sound like shit. I don't know. Is it a big cam or? <laughs> First, you're going first. It don't matter. It's just a nice path, and do you have brakes? I got brakes. Do you? No. <laughs> I have gears. <laughs> He's got a 1980 diesel Scout. We got a 1984 Bronco that's mostly held together, and it runs a whole lot better. So we got to go off-roading a little bit. So I'll follow you. All right. All right. Yeah.
All right, Derek's gonna go cut some grass. Um, I got enough, just enough time to swap this fender out yet, I think. We're gonna go grab supper and then hit the road again. Get a couple more hours tonight yet. All right, make it official. There, and only two slivers. <laughs> That's sick. <laughs> Was not expecting that today at all. <laughs> Thanks a lot, man. Absolutely. So if you guys haven't, of course you know who he is, but check out Dice Grip Garage. Thanks a lot, I appreciate man. you guys stopping by. Yeah. It was a lot of fun. That drives so much better now. The exhaust is a big thing, no more fumes coming in. So we can actually breathe. Now we won't get headaches as we're driving. That's a plus with the EFI. It just purrs like a kitten. I bet, I bet you we gained 30 horsepower. It was running way too rich. And even uh, Derek said when we passed him on the highway, it was just, you could just smell it all smoke coming out. And he goes, now when we're driving up and down the road, he said no more smoke. And uh, so hopefully we're running a little bit more efficient. We got the fuel tank, I think figured out so now we can pump gas faster which is good because we're almost empty and then uh, I'm excited to hit the highway but it would have been lugging and popping and pop 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 backfiring out of the exhaust coming up a hill like this in force man what a difference I think we need to get some wipers yet though So I just closed my door and that window decided to shatter. I guess, uh, yeah. yeah. Is that a Ford thing? We were making headway, now we need two windows, but that window is not an easy one to change. So I guess I'll clean all that up and then we can start driving and air can get a little colder. There we go. So unfortunately we didn't fix the kickback. I don't know whether the line kinked again, but we're still taking our time. But on the good side, we probably gained about a mile, mile and a half per gallon. Um, so now we're at about 12 and a half to 13 miles per gallon, as best as I can figure. That's 75, 80 miles an hour, we're really booking it but we're still getting really hot. So probably because we're doing 75 to 80 miles an hour. So it keeps boiling over. And we have now done a complete oil change on the engine. Uh, we've used the full six quarts of the T4 that we originally put in and have replaced it with more T4. One of the main reasons I like using Shell Rotella T4 is that it's so readily available. Um, you can basically buy it anywhere and don't like switching my oil brands. So if you unexpectedly need to do an oil change or you're burning a quart every time you uh, go through a tank of gas, um, Shell Rotel is the perfect uh, oil for that. Now we could use T6, but because we're going through so much oil, I hate using an oil that's good for 10,000 miles and um, we'll be doing an oil change every thousand, thousand miles or so. The engine is hurt a little bit. Uh, but it rides way better, way smoother with the exhaust fix than the EFI. It's been a good truck, it's been a lot of fun. A little bit more uh, to do, we'll do a meet up tonight and then uh, fly home tomorrow. And I'm excited to go home again too, here we go. So we had a little meet up. Fortunately the restaurant's closed, so we're just standing around doing nothing. And then I started looking at the truck and we got an offer for uh, a vent glass. Somebody's got it at work. So let's see if we can pull this out. I got the right tools. <laughs> Should be a screw right here. Oh, yeah. Uh, right here. Yeah. And then just this nut down here, I think. But I think we gotta pull the window out too. Crack the rest of the glass. Another one. There you go. There. Who needs so you two? <laughs> Get the window out. Yeah. So there's just four screws in the bottom for the, the, the little holder, and then um, one screw here, 
and then the top cover I think pops off. Take a Phillips out of here and pop that one off. That's much easier than the GMs. The GMs have the clip in the back. Yeah. yeah. And then 10, 11 millimeter bolt right here. Two screws right here. Tilt it. Take the glass out, and then you can maneuver the thing up. Sounds good. I'll go get the window for you. <laughs> Thanks, <man. laughs> No problem. <laughs> see if the back tailgate's worth buying the whole thing or just the glass and we got the quarter window all done we're gonna have a complete truck by the time we make it back to the border by the end of power tour it'll be painted and uh, new interior <laughs> <laughs> coyote will be in it it's gonna be fantastic <laughs> We're gonna take the engine and put it in the Bronco and then tow the Mustang home with the Bronco you guys good with that <laughs> <laughs> nice to meet you. Yeah, you too. There it is. Right on. Yeah, I think it should be the exact same tailgate, I think. <laughs> now will it open the rest of the way? Or? Yeah. It's not bad actually, it's just that front that front lip. You can cut those wires since they're already butt connected together. And it's, it really is. <laughs> this is like a throw together. Yeah, you know, the yeah. That is really heavy. I almost want to take the glass out, put it in there, and then just cut this section. Yeah, I can bring. I can bring grinders, cut okay. torches. <laughs> Yeah, that's all it is, these little brackets on the track bar here. Coil. Sure. You're Canadian. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. You guys use coil? No. no sweet, look at that. That one was just on because it's broken. <laughs> uh oh, the ours doesn't break. I bet with well, those rubbers or no like that it's gonna come out, right? Yeah, this one's, yep, uh, pop right out. Push it down, yeah. and then it goes, yeah, just peel it off. Yeah. That Bronco out there, that's, I'm impressed with how powerful it is. It's, it's more kind of had it. Oh, there it is. You got a whole lot of responsibilities in my freaking hands right now. <laughs> yep, there we go, perfect. Go. And now we do the classic discovery. Whoa! No! <laughs> Next day, we're leaving for the airport. <laughs> this is the uh, absolute last possible chance we get, but we're gonna close this up. Our wood did not make it to the very end. As long as these screws come out, sort of, we should be okay. Yeah, we found a place to keep the to keep the Bronco for two weeks when we come back. So this has actually been another epic trip. It's been fun building this thing as we go. We'll pull this apart and go from there. She served us very, very well. I don't think she could do a whole lot more. <laughs> very happy though, if you look at the bottom of the tailgate, 
how clean it is underneath here. Usually the rubbers go and then the water sits in the tailgate and even nice clean trucks have rotten tailgates at the bottom, which is what our other tailgate has, but this one's still really clean. So I think we're gonna cut the top off of the other one um, just in case we have trouble pulling these dents. We can weld that in if we if the dents don't pull out nice. And then leave the tailgate here. What a fantastic trip. Okay, down, all the way. When it comes out of the track, it flops a little bit. Hey! <laughs> nice! <laughs> Only a little bit of the trim came out. So. <laughs> all right, window's done. Only the last thing to do is to take it for a rip out in the back. Apparently this is an abandoned golf course. So, um, We'll have some fun. He's gonna take out his Ram Charger, which we'll put in a separate video as a viewer build, because that thing's pretty sick. And then hit the airport. We've got like three hours to kill, and then uh, we're all good. Here we go. So that's pretty well it. We got more coming up on Power Tour. It's hot, we gotta get going. <laughs> but we drove what? 20, 2,500 miles. 2,500 miles. And a thousand on Power Tour to do. Yeah. Uh, starter needs to be replaced for sure. Um, it doesn't like starting when it's hot. But 20, so we landed exactly one week ago, almost to the hour. Yeah. We drove 2,500 miles, we lifted it, we fixed the exhaust, replaced the hood, grill, um, front fender, rear fender, we had to grab those off of other trucks that were around, installed the roll cage, fixed the exhaust, installed the EFI. Um, went off-roading. Went off-roading, we did, we did twice, we did three viewer builds and uh, two meetups. And we haven't stopped, but Thankfully, the Bronco's been very good to us. It just doesn't like starting when it's hot, but that's okay, we need a break once in a while anyway. If it would have broke and left us by the side of the road, other than vapor locking, we would have been in trouble, but what an epic ride. Another 10 days and we're back in this thing. So, here we go. Gosh, it's hot. All right guys, that's the end of another epic road trip. We had a complete blast and deja vu as it ends with buying a Ford we end up walking home nothing to do with the truck it did awesome love that Bronco um, and I want to really say thank you to you guys for watching also big shout out to all the people that really helped us out along the way uh, Bob and everybody at all for fun 
Derek, uh, Dave, and Shane for bringing us the airport, storing the Bronco. And a special thanks to Pete and Shell for keeping that engine running long enough for us to make the 2,500 miles. A thousand to go. We'll do that in a couple weeks. Thanks, guys. Remember, if you're not filthy, you're not rich. We want to do some more of these. This was a lot of fun. So uh, we'll keep you guys updated and back to working on projects. Here we go.